See you later, love. Good luck. Thank you. soggy cereal, I'm having you skinned and turned into bongo dressing. I'm sorry, Mrs. Sinclair, but I warned you last week. Well, I'm sorry, too. Look, I found my feet flat on these city sidewalks, and I can't find another place. Well, there's nothing we can do about that. Look, look, will you just look at this? This is my receipt. I paid my rent. Look, I told you, lady, this has got nothing to do with paying the rent. This building's been condemned. I'm not going. Well, I am sorry. Come on, let's go. You can't do that. Two start over there. Bob, give me a hand over here. Why don't I get the chairs out of the kitchen? I ain't going. Kids, kids, get in there and sit down on Grandma's hope chest. All of it. Christina, hand me my purse. Come on, honey. Come on, Mama needs you. I want you to take this and this, and I want you to go call Mitch and tell him what's happening. Come on now, hurry up. Where'd you get all this money? Worked for it. We're here to call you on your promise. What promise? Last year, you said that if we could raise the money to fix it up, you'd get the city to loan us a building, one for the people that have been evicted. No, and no, I believe I said I'd try. Now, we are doing a study. And oh, come on, it's too late for a study. It's October already. Winter's coming. Look, this city controls hundreds of buildings that landlords have abandoned. These people, they're not moving into the Watergate. And they're not moving into city property until my staff and I can be sure of the ramifications. What ramifications? You've got empty buildings, we've got people that need them. We're offering you a solution on a silver platter. Look, we'll operate it. We'll even pay the utilities. Hell, we're doing your job for you. But don't you care? It's not a question of caring. My job, my responsibility is to the property of the citizens of Washington. What about the citizens of Washington who have no property? Don't you also have a responsibility to them? I told you we're doing a study. Now, the city already has two family shelters available. And they're both full. There are 2,000 forced evictions every year. Are you sure your figures? Yes! I check with the marshal's office. Hold on for a minute. Dudney here. Hold on. Mitch, it's for you. Thank you. Hello? Hi, Mary Ellen. What's up? Next stop, Washington Post. You want some advice? Don't. I told you I was going to help you, and I will. But you're not helping me or yourself by trying to make us look bad. All right, I got it. You call the press. We're on our way. Now, that was about a neighbor of ours, Ida Sinclair. She's not being evicted. She's just being thrown out in the street with six kids. You can come with us or catch it on the 6 o'clock news. Watch her hitting that banister, though. <laughs> Morning, you lady. You're making us luck, you. But we ain't lucking that couch down, too. Officer, I find it hard to believe that you can't just. Hi, right, Carol. Where's Ida? She's still inside. What about the kids? I sent them next door. I didn't want them to see any of this. Excuse me, fellas. Excuse me. Hey, put her down, will you, fellas? It's all right, Ida. It's all right, sweetheart. It's all right. Hey, watch out down there. Oh, no, that's my cat, you crazy! My cat! You crazy! You crazy! You crazy! Oh! You crazy! You crazy! It's all right.
right, let it go, Hunter. I'm Max Gunning, WXTC News. This is Ida Sinclair. Uh, who are you? I'm Mitch Snyder. Mitch Snyder. Why are you being evicted, Mrs. Sinclair? Give her a minute, will you please? Why are you being evicted, Mrs. Sinclair? It's not my fault. It's I paid my rent. It's not my fault. I got four kids in the hospital. They got lead poisoning from the from the walls. It's not my fault. Fix the walls. Did you just tell me, Mr. Mayor? Where's the woman with ten babies supposed to go? Where? Fix the wall. You excuse me. Thanks for coming. Come on, sweetheart. We'll go over to your house. Hey, Are you people? We're the CCNV. Uh, it's kind of lobbyists. We serve soup, not season. Could you tell me a little about these people, please? Well, Harold was a nuclear chemist for 10 years. I was a housewife, and Mitch was a businessman on Madison Avenue. Uh, no, no, the CC, what is it? It's CCNV. It's the Community for Creative Nonviolence, a kind of non sectarian kibbutz. Some kind of anti war group? You could say that. Gandhi said poverty was the worst form of violence. This is another of the more than 2,000 evictions that are taking place in the city of Washington this year. And yet for this small band of zealots, the members of the CCNV, Ida Sinclair and her children would not have a place to call home tonight. This small community of activists fighting a private war against poverty is all that stands between Ida Sinclair and the cold streets. Come on. This is Max Gunning, WXDC Evening News. Okay, be careful now. Head up the stairs and turn right. I sure hope I didn't start something and ain't got to finish. Listen to me, Ida. After what's happened to you, you've got a right to start something. That makes salad sandwich. Six years. I've been on that housing waiting list. I don't want to get kicked back down to the bottom. If they even try, Will. You're what? You'll be fine. You're young and you're healthy. You haven't got anything to lose, but... Me? I've been scrubbing hospital floors for 22 years. I'm worn out. I, I don't bounce back. Don't worry, Ida. We'll find you a place. Honey, don't make promises you can't keep. You don't know how bad it's got. This city's crawling with people just like me. People being thrown away. What did Dudney say? He says we have to wait in line. If we could just get our hands on a building. I mean, we could do the work ourselves. I say we go back down there. I say we go back and sit outside that dude's office, and we don't leave until we get his attention. We make signs. We make more magic with the Max Gunnings of the world. I can't believe he wouldn't respond if he knew what was happening. And we're not going to get anywhere unless we appeal to him as a person. He's not a person. He's a bureaucrat. Bureaucrats are people. We got to work on his heart. Harold? Supposing you and I moved into that park near his office without any press or anything else. Just us and him, people to people. It's just cold out there, man. We'll freeze. That's the whole point. Yeah, we're fine. If it'll make him see, I'm all for it. Good deal. Carol, please call him and tell him we intend to stay there day and night till we get a building. He's got a conscience. Hey, Mitch. What's this? Long Johns. You're gonna need them. <laughs> Thanks. 
a lot for helping us. Mm-hmm. Joel Bastin. You know what that is? Mm-hmm. It's a new stunt to fraternity got, huh? They sent the street for a fire and they watch them hop. Oh, it does make me damn mad to see them picking on street fucker. And when they try to steal me buggy, I don't want nobody to touch me stuff, eh? Hm. You see this buggy? I paid two dollars for it. And even when I sleep in, look here. You see this? They can't get it. And if they try, I'll go. Right for the eye. <laughs> it got so far in it, you know. You must buy the generic kind, huh? Uh -huh. It's as good as the name brand and it's cheaper. <laughs> really? You have food in here? Yeah, sandwiches. Here, why don't you have one? No, no, I don't have my dinner ready. Take one for later. No, I say I have my dinner. But your pups is green, eh? You must keep food where you're sleeping. The rat will get it. And when you finish eating, you must wash off your mouth good and your hands too, otherwise they'll get you. They just will nibble your lip right off. Eh? Look here, I was aiming at one when no those snakes look up. One what? The rat! I was aiming at the rat when the snakes look up. You mean a rat near us? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And listen to me. You're going to freeze, you took us off if you don't get some cardboard or a heating grate to sleep on. And you must wrap up yourself in plastic, huh? It keep you warm. You better start thinking out here, you know. Out here is not for the dog. When you move out in the street, eh? You become an invisible man. Who can help us thinking old soul when they have the underwear and, and the shop for designer ice cream to look at her? Huh? Hmm? I go on, see? Take care. Hey, thanks again. Take care. So young, so young, so young. Look at that. Yeah, summer's here at the Ellipse. I'm gonna need the car over here. Old Esther Gore has finally cashed it in. Ben Ford, we'll get you an ambulance and some assistance. You knew her? She was practically a landmark. Lived here for years. Ever since they let her out of some institution, all of us street guys tried to get her to go inside. No way. Looks like she froze to death. Too bad somebody didn't give her a blanket when she could have used one.
Hey, Muriel. Mm-hmm. Come over here and sit down. I got the buggy. I buy two of these. You know, I hide the other one with my buggy in the secretary treasury garage. Listen, the French embassy, you see? The French embassy, they is having a sale. So they buy new fridges. And I was the first in line for two of these. But can you imagine those movers? They sell me these boxes, all Muriel, for seven dollars a piece. Eh? Seven dollars? Tiffin! Tiffin! You can pay me when you get it, huh? No, no, we got it. Harold's our uh, banker. <laughs> you have the money? <laughs> yeah. How much did you say? Seven dollars. Here you go. What is this? Ten dollars. Oh, ten dollars, I have to give you change. No, you keep the change. Oh, no, no. Miriam, don't. I don't mind, you see where I got it. You're my friend, both of you. Huh? But Muriel don't take, and she don't get taken. I pay seven, you pay seven. Here your change, two dollars. Besides, Officer Summers tell me you're taking care of me pal, Esther. You're claiming she ashes, yes? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm, thanks. Esther was crazy, you know. Crazy? Oh, my, she was crazy, but good. Hmm? But you see what I mean? You have to have something to sleep in. Hmm? If you don't get the first bite, it bites you. Look here, you know, I have some crayons. You paint it up pretty outside, make it look nice. I mean, if you like. Huh? I like, thank you very much. Come, son, you help me get the other box of me bug, yeah? Okay. And listen, in. you take care of me bug, yeah? I don't want nobody touching me stuff. Oh, nobody will touch it, I promise. All right, I go on, see? It's over here, we're going, see? Hey, hello. Oh, boy, you smell gamey. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Where's Harold? He's taking a bath at that gas station down the block. They're nice people. They let the street folks use the radiator hose. What do you got there? Oh, full of socks. Thank you, hon. My feet are freezing. Come over here. Sit down. I would have been here sooner, but we had 40 people for lunch. I wish I knew where they were all coming from. Institutions. Nearly half these people are mentally ill. We used to keep them in places where they were cared for, but since the courts changed the law, they're being dumped out onto the streets to protect their civil rights and save us a few bucks. The other half are alcoholics or veterans or unemployed or just plain poor people like Ida Sinclair. The uh, temperature's supposed to drop tonight. So I hear. I was thinking that once we see Dudney leave, why don't you come home and get warm? You can come back here first thing in the morning before he gets to work. I told you, I'm not leaving till we get a building. You're not leaving, you're just getting warm for a while. You know, Ida was right. We don't know the half of what's been going on out here. We don't know a tenth. This is where the homeless live, day and night. We're sitting in their living room right now. We're not gonna learn how to help them by running back to a warm shelter as soon as it gets dark. We won't help anybody if you get sick or freeze. You're in no physical condition. You're half blind. Your doctor won't even vouch for your heart. My heart is sick from what I'm seeing out here. I got news for you, Mahatma. Sitting on a sidewalk and freezing to death ain't gonna fix that. I'm not leaving. Mitch, please. I can't stand by and watch you do this. Nobody's asking you to. 
One frozen activist, a two-inch column in the post. Who care? Nobody. If you keep pushing me, you're going to push me right out of your life. You got to do what you got to do, Carol. Damn you! This is a relationship. Two into one, remember? Yes. And we both have individual responsibilities. Well, I'm sorry. I, I can come back later. No, no, no. It's all right. Uh, Mr. Dudney, this is Carol Finley. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind coming up to the office, if it's convenient. Now? Yeah. Sure. I better wait here for Harold. Try and stay warm. So what about a shelter? Why, uh... Got Mrs. Sinclair and her children in an apartment. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I know she'll appreciate that. Now, what about a shelter for the homeless? Look, now, I made some calls. The city's already providing over 400 beds for the homeless. I made some calls, too, and my figures say it's a lot less. Well, most of those are empty. I don't know who told you that, but I know you're smart enough not to believe it. All you got to do is look out the window and count the number of people in that park. Look, my, jo my job is to manage city property, not to manage the homeless. What do you want from me? You know what I want. That's why you have me up here. OK. Who was, uh, who was that guy? Esther Gore I know about, but his name was written on the side of one of those boxes. Bill Crowhurst. He was a homeless man living on a heating grate in a triangle on Pennsylvania Avenue. Bus made too wide a turn and ran over. Mitch, I would really like to help you. Just I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. Give us a shelter. Can't do that. I lose my job. No, you wouldn't. You're a public servant. Exactly. I am paid to manage city property. I'm just another cog in the wheel of the bureaucracy. You're the bureaucracy, I'm the bureaucracy. Every man, woman, and child on this planet is the bureaucracy. We're hypnotized and immobilized by it. But bureaucracy is nothing more than the name of a system that stops us from being human beings. You are better than that system. He's been in there a long time. There he is. Come on. We didn't get it right. What? What? We got a building. <laughs> what you look so sad for? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Coming over to help us. Oh, shoot. Way I figured that Dudney person wouldn't have done nothing to help me find an apartment if it hadn't been for you people. I mean, the very least I can do is help you fix up your shelter. Mitch, you're sitting on the wallpaper. Oh, no wonder it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> we shouldn't have done it without telling us. I don't know. It sounds like I'd have got a pretty good place out of it. I'm talking about the windows. Well, you can't have a warm building with broken windows. That's not the point. You spend all of our money. How are we going to pay for everything else? What else do we need? Nails, shingles, lumber, plumbing, electric wire. Food. I had 60 people for lunch yesterday. Where are we going to find the money to keep feeding the people who show up at our back door? What I want to know is where are all those people sleeping? What if we ask the churches? Ask them what? to open their doors and let us use them as temporary shelters, at least until we get this place finished. Finished? How are we going to finish it when you spend all our money on the windows? Why don't we make up some baked potatoes and tea? At least we can take it out to warm up the people if we can't give them a roof. 
By the way, you guys are doing a terrific job. Don't let me get in your way, you know what I mean? Get down. Please. Please. We're from the CCNV. We got some baked potatoes and some hot tea for you if you like. You got any heat? Well, sure, if you don't mind crashing on our floor. He doesn't mean heat. He means heat. Venus. Moonshine. Ah, oh, no, I'm sorry. We got none of that. Should have stewed these potatoes, not baked them. Yeah. You can help yourself out of here. And take this garbage and that brown water with you before I force it right through your kidneys the hard way. <gasps> C E T A H U D C C N V. You're a bunch of slimy, skimming government pigs. I can spell you all out four ways and four letters. The CCNV is the Community for Creative Nonviolence. We're not a government agency. We're just trying to help, and this is the best we could do. I'm sorry we bothered you. Let's go. Hey, you. What's your name? Mitch. You can call me Potato Face. <laughs> hey, there's an old man out there. He's sick. If you're for real, you can help me. <coughs> Come on. Thank you. Lord, if they could just see what I see, be what I be, I'd give it to them. Excuse me, sir. Don't be frightened. We just want to help. Don't take me to the hospital, not there. Last time at the hospital, they made me so scared, I almost messed on myself. Why don't you come to our place? What you got there? Some hospitality. You can get warm, and we can change that bandage. It's OK. We won't hurt you. I'm Mitch. That's Carol. Hi. Mm. Yeah. Long as it ain't the hospital. Don't worry. Come on, I'll give you a hand. Up you go. That's it. Feed my little lambs. Jesus always be saying. Watch your footing. Willie no. White keeps some warm. That's it. Another one. Keep one more. Some snug. That's it. One last one. You got it. Our car's right over there, see? Come on, you got it made. So what's your name? Reverend St. Keys. Take it easy. You promised, now you're just going to change the bandage, right? Did they um, give you anything for this at the hospital, Reverend? Stay off your feet. Be sure not to remain outside at night. And get this, they list him with no fixed address. Living on the street, you get feathers in your ears. That's what I told them. Told who? The white coats. I told them, I'm not schizo. And neither am I. <laughs> Put me away. Said living on the streets was crazy. <gasps> then a new man come and let us all out. And you know what I say? Nuts. You sound like a pretty smart fellow to me. Well, I may be crazy, but I ain't stupid. Mitch. 
Excuse us a minute, please. What? We've got to get him to a doctor. We promised we wouldn't. I know, but I think he's got gangrene. When I was changing his bandage, his big toe came off. Oh, dear God. We'll take him right away. What time is it? Late. Dr. Heffron to ICU, please. Dr. Heffron to ICU. Couldn't we at least get him a bed? We've been here for over two hours. Uh, Camp? Uh, Chris Camp. Uh, do you have your insurance number? Oh, good. Uh, go right in there. We were here long before him. I told you, all the rooms are full. I know what's going on here. It's hands-off time. Now, is it because he doesn't have any insurance, or is it because he needs a bath? What if he was your father? Where do you think you're going? Find a doctor. This is a hospital, isn't it? Don't trouble yourself, ma'am. I know you're busy. I'm sorry, there isn't any more. I'm sorry. And if we're lucky, kids, and if the low does what I think it'll do, it'll be no school for you. So what's the bottom line? A high time Ain't gonna be no school if they don't learn the golden rule. Cause earthquake, wind, and fire. It's going to blow this world sky high. No lie. We're calling all the churches in Washington. We're building a shelter, but it's not finished yet. If we could just get a few churches to open their doors. I'm sure you are doing plenty, but we all could do more. No, no for the homeless. Vagrants are just people who... Never mind. Got 70 people fed, 20 more showed up, and we ran out of food. Excuse me. Anybody find Muriel? Harold's still looking. Did you vote? Yeah. Well, she's a survivor. You gotta look on the bright side, right? I've been calling all week every single church, synagogue, and mosque in the Yellow Pages. Two have agreed to open their doors. That's the bright side. How are we gonna feed all these people breakfast tomorrow? Day by day, the manna fell. There's your answer. I'm gonna look for Muriel. Oh, Mitch, check the morgue. It was in the paper. Three more people froze to death. Flock by night. Did you find her? No. And he shall give his angels charge over thee, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Mm -hmm. That's a sign. You saved my foot when they was gonna chop it off. Good. Maybe you can use it to kick an angel for me. One that delivers groceries. Oh, by the way, I didn't mean to ask you why you wear those. Keys around your neck. That's my hobby. Ain't you never had no hobby? <laughs> See you in the morning.
name's Andrew. Andrew Jackson. No relation. You Mitch Snyder? Yeah, come here. Uh, Ida Sinclair told me you could use some help. My pickup's out back. It's full of food. I can fill it up every day if you like. And it's all yours. Field goal. <laughs> hey, Brussels sprouts. I didn't know they still made these. There's so many. <laughs> this is nothing. Hey, now that garbage is going this shop. Now that's some serious food. You know, I've been feeding my kids on gourmet store food trash for over a year now. Hey, you! What the hell do you think you are doing? This ain't no restaurant. But you're taking the garbage. No, you're not. Hey, hey, come on. Oh, okay. Take, take it easy. We're out of here. I don't want to see you around here again. Veggies look a little tight. Stores can't sell it. Well, then they ought to be glad that we're taking it off their hands. It should be. They give it away and they get a big tax break for it. Some stores have programs for it. But others, they think it's dangerous. Something about insurance problems. And since technically it's their food until it hits the garbage trucks. See, technically we're stealing. Yeah, but if we told the stores what's going on, I mean, if they knew that people were actually going wait, hungry, wait, 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 wait. Bottom of the ninth, the old team is out. Hey! hey. hey. The election results. We're hoping this new mayor has his eyes open to what's going on in this town. <laughs> Mitch. I think you better come with me. I think you all better come with me. Carol. Excuse me. shelter. They tore down our shelter. How? Why? Why did they do this? What difference does it make they did it? I guess they really decided to get tough with us. What a vicious, spiteful thing to do. What are we going to do now? Where are we going to put all those people? Sorry, fellas, we're only doing our job. Okay, you fellas move along now. They don't want you here. Where do they want it? Come on, Tom, let's go. Smart boy! Keep your head warm, keep your body light. Muriel! Where the hell have you been? We've been looking all over for you. The DAR had a ringing, and Miss Asta asked me to be decoration on top of the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. 
step into my office. Oh, yes. It looks very warm it here. It is warm. I, I, so, I bring some tea. Good deal. You know, I went to the post office to pick up a check, and then I went to the hotel. When I get my social security check, see, Afra posters look damn good to me. <laughs> Thank you. Expensive, eh? Twenty-three dollars a night, the damn thief. You got to buy the naughties, so. What? You got to buy the naughties. How we used to pay first month rent and last month rent, eh? We don't have it. I hate to knock on your house, darling. I'm sorry. Ah, no, no, not my house. It was yours. We were fixing it up for the homeless. Well, that's the second time, then. What do you mean? I had my beauty parlor in my house for 42 years. Then along come the road workers, progress, they call it. They knock it down. It wasn't much. Yes, I booked the old shop, but it was mine, huh? They never did build the damn road. Hey, you better get moving. It's clean sweep time. What do you mean? They're covering up the grates. When the neighborhood gets too crowded, there's too many of us hanging out. They lock up the heaters. The birds of the air have nests. The foxes have holes. But the son of man have no place to lay his head. Where to now? I know. Give me a hand. All right. Help me with this stuff. Well, this is a federal office. It seems to me that your business is with the city. That's like playing one man ping pong. There's no time for games. It's winter now. People are freezing. They need a roof, any roof. We want the National Visitor Center. Well, why think so small? Why not ask for the Pentagon? Come on. You and I both know that center is nothing but a big white elephant. This office is not about to turn over a multi-million dollar investment to a bunch of street people. An investment that's totally wasted. If you ask me, that center's nothing but an empty train station with locks on the doors. Just give us one of the side rooms. At least it'll get some use. It's warm, it's accessible, logical, it's... It is not a federal problem. What if it were your parents out there? As I said, it's not a federal problem. I'm sorry. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a luncheon. I think you ought to know we plan on moving in whether you give us your approval or not. Then you and your homeless people run the risk of being arrested. Fine. At least in jail they won't freeze to death. Sad, isn't it? That in this incredibly rich country, that's what it takes. Hey, what the hell is this? We can't stay here. My friend Carol is meeting with a very powerful lady in this agency. We're trying to get him to give us a shelter. Give us? What's in this for you? One thing you learn out here is that everybody's out to get something. I don't know what you're out to get, but I'm watching you, boy. Take it easy, will you? Here she comes. Carol. How'd we do? Oh, it was a total head-on collision. 
We gotta think up a new strategy. She's still there? Yeah. All right, fine. We're all going in to see her together. Uh, Mitch. Diane Fisk, Mitch Schneider. How do you do, ma'am? Hello. Uh, this CCNV, how many belong? <laughs> well, there's, uh... <laughs> Never mind. Look, do me a favor. Cancel this demonstration before the press gets here. We still won't give you the visitor's center, but we won't not give it to you either. What do you mean? Let's just say that for the next few days, when you get there, the doors won't be locked. Is it a deal? All right, it's a deal. Thanks very much. Sounds good. Guys. All right. Bless you. Bless you. It's a start. What's the baby name? JR. JR. Come on, JR. Come on, baby. Have a little more water. Where you get such a name from? I named him after Dallas, so he wouldn't have to take nothing off of no one. Hmm. I was scared to death worrying about you. Did you find out what happened to the van? Not yet. Got some milk, though. Warmed it up, too. Then, if this isn't from the money hid under the seat. Aw, oh, honey. You didn't sell any more blood, did you? Billy, honey, you can't do that no more. You gotta promise me. You run out of fuel, you'll stop. Then what are we gonna do? Listen. Your children have anything against black people and hippies? Shopping cart and me buggy? Yeah. It'll be safe. It'll be safe. I don't want nobody to touch my stuff. Nobody will touch your stuff. So what happened to you guys? Well, we thought we were set. Billy's daddy left him the farm. And up comes this government farm official. Tells us how to refinance and use the money to improve. Then grain prices drop. Instead of improving, we lost it all. Came up here looking for work. It's just like Iowa, if nothing. Back home, you don't even talk to black people. Then up comes this lady, out of nowhere. I wouldn't have done it for her. Ariel understands. She's homeless too. I'm not homeless. You just don't have no place to live. Get the hat on right now. So right in here. Yep, yep, yep. I got it. You got it? Yep, yep. Okay, that's it. Let's take it to faces, get the faces, and then pay it all again. Keep it going. That's good. All right. Turn that light off. Get some faces. Oh, you don't. No, it's okay. It's okay. All right. Come here. Get this guy over here. Yeah, yeah. Help me get out of here. I don't want my family to see me on no news. Damn creeps. I knew there'd be a price. Come on. You promised. You said we come here. There wouldn't be no pictures. That's what they told me. Come on. There's a lesson in this. Never trust anyone that's sober. Huh? <laughs> Forget them scumballs. <laughs> you know the right way to get on TV? 
we get all cleaned up and they get one of them game shows. <laughs> With my luck, I'd probably win a dining room set. You're more like the washer dryer type to me. <laughs> I got a mission on second and D. Uh -huh. You can quote me. Uh -huh. See? Here's the key. Sir, how long have you been homeless? St. Peter's pearly gates need a roof. Don't you know? Yeah, sure they do. Yeah. And take the tower of battle and beat it. You don't, don't need it. Where are you guys going? Thank you. No pictures, you promised. Hang on a second. Mm -hmm. Max. Hi, Mitch. How you doing? What the hell do you think you're doing here? What does it look like I'm doing Look, here? this may not seem like much to you, but this is their home. Yeah. And you don't barge in somebody's home and stick a camera in front of their face without asking yes, for their permission. I'm just trying to help. I'm not sure if you're just trying to help or you just want a story. Oh, another uh, time and another place. Thank you. <laughs> Very sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Please forgive me. Won't happen again. It's an unfortunate mistake. Hey, guy you okay, Tom, what's the matter? Grab him. Oh. oh, easy, easy. He's not drunk. He's sick. He needs a hospital. All right, let's get him to one. Off you go. Well, Tom. Come on, buddy. Up, boy. Up, Come on, boy. Security to west exit, please. Security to west exit. You go, Jess. Do you really think he's going to be okay? We'll make sure of it, don't worry. I, I hate it when you care about people. I really hate it. Yeah, I know how it feels. Do you? Sure. I was married once, and I have two sons. If anything ever happened to one of them, I know, well, I, Tom's not your son, but you care for him like a son, right? What happened to him? Your wife and kids, I mean. Oh, they're in New York. She's remarried, and they're very happy. We're friends now. But when we were together, I had a big job on Madison Avenue, making lots of money. But I couldn't make it work inside. I hated my life. It was contagious. I woke up one morning in a cold sweat. I knew I had to change direction. She kicked you out, huh? <laughs> no, 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 I kicked myself out. <laughs> I decided to take some time off and try and get my head together. I was hitchhiking across country with this guy who, unbeknownst to me, had rented the car with a stolen credit card. We got busted. I got two years in Danbury Prison in Connecticut. And that's where I met the Berrigans. Priests? Mm-hmm. The activists? You know them? Yeah, yeah. I, I read some of this stuff. Well, Dan and Phil Berrigan were my cellmates for two years. Most important two years of my life. They taught me to accept the cup as offered, not altered and to turn my own personal pain into something positive, and to do it through community. So when I came out, oh, I joined Okay, okay, uh, I don't need any more lectures. Dr. I'm sorry. Hall, so Dr. what's your story? Hall, it's boring. Be movie time. Yeah, I'd really like to hear it. Yeah, you and Walter Cronkite. <laughs> you want some advice? Hmm. Don't ask a person like me about their past. They don't want to remember. Just want to get through the day. Here's his prescription. After you fill it, I'd like you to... Uh... How's he going to fill a prescription when he doesn't have any money? Take it easy, Jesse. We'll work it out. Do what you can do. Thanks, Doc. Nurse Hanks, pick up line three, please. Nurse Hanks, line three. Did you know that Tom had qualified for his assistance checks if he had an address? But in order to qualify, he has to get a damn address. You can use our address, okay? Now listen to me. The most important thing right now is for you to keep up your spirits for him. You hear me? Jesse! 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 It's okay, just, just go on back to your room so we get it all taken care of. You'll be out of here. Okay, look, just go. The curtain, I peeked behind the curtain. Sammy Taylor is in there. They put me in a room with Sammy Taylor dead. <laughs> Keep your spirits up, huh? See why it's easy to pour them through the neck of a bottle?
made your tea just the way you like it, nice and sweet. Thank you. How was the take today? Not so good. A lot of the markets have started putting locks on their dumpsters. What are you doing? Making a cross for Sammy Taylor. Who's that? Friend of a friend. He's being cremated today. I want you showered and ready to go in 20 minutes. There's a Capra festival playing downtown. I'm oh, sorry, I'm too busy. This is non-negotiable. All right, you win. What's playing? It's a wonderful life. Hey, thanks, Carol. That was fun. I haven't been to a movie in years. You want to go to another? There's a new Fonda picture playing in Georgetown. Let's check out the visitor center first. I just want to make sure Mary Ellen and Harold have got everything under control. You can't throw these people out on the streets. We have permission to be in there. They've got nowhere else to go. What is this? Hey, Doug. What's happening here? Talk to the man at the door. I don't know. What's going on, guys? Christ. Excuse me, fellas. Excuse me. Hey, what's going on here? We're locked out. Why? Department of Interior put their foot down, said they were getting complaints from train station passengers. Oh, that's just wonderful. It's supposed to drop 30 degrees out tonight. What are we supposed to do, sit on sticks and play popsicle? What about our stuff, our cots, our coffee urn? What about our stuff? Look, I'm sorry, I don't know. Sweetheart, I leave me buggy and me shut my cart inside. Can I go get it? Look, I'm sorry, I think it got tossed out. Tossed. What do you mean, tossed? Hmm? Look, I'm sorry. You throw away my stuff? You mean it, you throw away my stuff? Lord. It, it took. It's all right now. You throw away my stuff. All right. If they're going to send us back out onto the streets, we're going to pick the spot! What are these people, nuts? Look, looks like there's going to be trouble. You better go call it in. Yeah. Well, 
walk hand in hand. We walk hand in hand. We walk hand in hand. We walk hand in hand. So. Hi, Max. Thanks for coming. You promised That's me an exclusive. Sorry, buddy. I lied. Don't worry. Today. They're using cheese as landfill in Tennessee. Tons. <laughs> the wrapping falls apart, or it just sits there until it rots. And why not? The government surpluses are astronomical. Ms. Holmes, would you tell us what they are, please? The estimates for 1983 over 700 million pounds of butter, over a billion pounds of cheese, you got any almost change? two million pounds of rice, and almost two billion pounds of non-fat dry milk. For you, Mitch, any? Thanks, pal. Stick around, the main event's coming up. It's costing a million dollars a day, one million dollars a day, just to store the stuff. I say we save some money, and we save some lives. We start giving it away. And look at this. Perfectly good food. While there are people all over the country, all over the world, who are going hungry. Yes, hello. Is this the executive office of Bob's Market Chain? Yeah, well, listen, sir, I don't know what to make of it, but there's a bunch of people in the garbage dumpster behind your store on 8th Street. Yes, sir, that's correct, and I just thought you ought to know about it. Oh, not at all, sir. Just doing my Christian duty. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. It's common decency. And it's good stewardship. At least if it's getting tossed, why not toss it to some hungry people? Food banking, that's the idea. Passing on excess products to people who are really needy. But not enough stores are doing that now. I mean, even as we speak, this chain of supermarkets are putting locks on all their dumpsters. It's their food. I'm sure they have every legal right. What the hell is going on here? Right. Hey, you get out of there. Yeah, you. I told you to get out of there. That's my garbage. Who are you? Bob's Markets. And I'm Bob. Get him out of there. Who in the hell do you think you are coming back here? Hi, Pete Stark. Congressman Pete Stark. How do you do? Bob, why do you keep the dumpsters locked, huh? Well, I, uh, uh... Sir, are you aware of how much good food you're throwing out? Keep well, uh, it's, uh, why is it? I had, well, the dog, uh, wrote uh, I couldn't resist the urge to call him. I hope you don't mind. Uh, mind? You're helping me to help people, and I get to look good besides what more could a politician want? I don't know. We called every office on the hill, and we were the only one who showed up. Well, anything I can do to help? The health department? What would the health department say about it? You I think mean, it's healthy for people to go hungry? Well, I can't just give this garbage away. Why not? Uh, well, overhead, I mean, uh, you know, company policy. Just... You're at the company, Bob. Hurt. Oh. There is one more thing you could do. One of these things. Besides, How about a lunch? Problems I have. Big ones. Well, let's make sure the reporters are taken care of first. Huh? No, not now. I mean later for the whole Congress. If you could help us organize it, I'd like to feed them some of the things we get out of the dumpsters. Get some of those heads on the hill out of the clouds. What do you say? Would you get out here? Get away from there. That's a very interesting idea. And you haven't tasted Carol's cooking yet. She'll give them a meal and I'll give them a message. Let's talk about that. Okay. Called jicama. It's like a Mexican potato. Very sweet. You like it? You believe it all came out of the trash? Mm -hmm. Just 
it's going to be wasted, thrown away. <laughs> nice talking to you. This is unbelievable. This is garbage. Oh, yeah? We feed hundreds of people every day on this trash. It gives new meaning to the term junk food. <laughs> Seriously, Senator, you know, 10 people froze to death last winter, and even with the new shelter, it's like a flood. Every day, there are more and more people, so we need more shelters. It's as simple as that. Listen, you want my advice? Stick to these food stunts. Everybody loves food. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this quiche isn't bad. Mm -hmm. Hey, Pete, you know that surplus cheese you were telling me about? Let's talk to our committee. Give some of it away. Okay. Great idea. Thank you, Senator. Excuse me. You know, that guy has the clout to set up a congressional hearing on homelessness. We've been thinking local, Carol. We've got to start thinking of ways to focus on the problem all over the country. Mitch, meet Susan Baker. How do you do, ma'am? Hello. It's Carol Finley. Carol. Her husband's Jim Baker, the president's chief of staff, and Susan is involved as a spokesperson for people in the private sector who want to help the homeless. And this is Melvin Mander. How are you, sir? It's nice to meet you. Carol? Mel is part of a special task force being formed in the uh, department of WHS. See, the idea is to match surplus government food and property to needy situations. Good deal. We need all the help we can get. What are you guys doing here? Why aren't you in the Pierce Street shelter? Would be. But it's full. prepare a place for all of you. Mitch, mm, my mission on D Street. Mm -hmm. You'd think by now the task force or one of us would come up with something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hey, Reverend old buddy, keep it down, will you? God's not deaf. We hear you. Mm -hmm. The Lord healed my foot. Yet, they did not believe. He brought manna in a truck for the multitudes, and still they would not believe. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And there's a great big one downtown. My mission on D Street, right next to the big hotel. We ought to check this out. Lead on, Reverend. Here you go, come on. This is my okay? place. I miss you. I miss you. This is the place of my vision. Nearer, my God, to thee, lest I got to second and deep. Let me find this key. My home. Is. Yeah, you did it. Good. Beauty.
It's big enough, it's centrally located, it's vacant. It's sold. Or at least it will be by April 25th. So this is December. We only need it between now and then. The utilities, Mitch, they'll cost at least $5,000 a month. We'll pay them. All we need is a key. Actually, we don't even need that. The plumbing, uh, the roof, it's unsafe. We'll fix it up. We'll give it back in better shape than we got it. Hey, look, in a few days it'll be Christmas. Please, just call him and ask. We already did. Ask again. Why don't you uh, try it one more time, Mella? All right. Thank you. Mitch, five thousand dollars a month. We don't even have five cents. Where are we going to get the money to fix it up? Hello, Margaret. Yeah, it's Melvin Mander again. Well, they say they'll pay for everything. It's Christmas, Margaret. Come on. What do you say we make some room at the inn, huh? Thanks. Bye. She says they got to make some repairs. But uh, you can have it in three or four weeks. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Now, what do we do in the meantime? Tonight, Mitch Snyder, locally famous for hunger strikes and other activism on the part of the poor, finally had something to cheer about this Christmas season. We are very happy to announce that the homeless of Washington are getting a temporary shelter on 2nd and D Street, but unfortunately, this shelter won't be ready for several weeks. And we just learned that the temperature is supposed to drop 20 degrees tonight. That means some people could freeze to death. And you know, we have whole families out here now, men, women, and little children. So we need your help. We need your ideas. We need your prayers. I guess what we really need is a Christmas miracle, a miracle on 2nd Street. We want to thank you for what you've already done and wish you a Merry Christmas. It's a nice piece Max did. Miracles do happen. Let's hope it answers our Max prayers. Gunning, WXDC. CCNV, Mitch Schneider. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm all right. Okay, thanks, Mona. I'll be right down. Mona Sanderson at the morgue. Um, they've got an old black lady down there with a red Christmas corsage, and they think it's Muriel. They want me to come down and identify her. I'll go. No, it's all right. I said I'd go. Uh, Muriel! <laughs> Called and they said that they had found a lady with a red corsage like yours. And we thought that. You stupid. <laughs> you mean this? 
Yes, you stupid. <laughs> I make one like this every time this year. Must be about 9,000 little old black ladies down there with the same kind of cassage this time of year. <laughs> oh, come let us oh, 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 come let us adore Merry Christmas. Oh, come and what is it? Oh, Mitch, some cracker box want to loan you a miracle. Done? All right, here we go. The Hotel Presidential, once the stately home of Washington's fanciest dinner parties, soon to be the victim of the Wreckers' Ball. Yet this Christmas Eve marks the final and perhaps the most moving chapter for this famous landmark. Last night's On the Spot segment reported the pleas of Mitch Snyder, who asked for a Christmas miracle, a miracle on 2nd Street. Enter real estate tycoon Oliver T. Carr, who loaned his soon-to-be-demolished property as his Christmas gift to the homeless. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, but his heart doesn't stop here. Cars are lining up around the block with people dropping off food and clothing. Restaurateur Dominique has sent his limo with 10 cases of his famous Senate bean soup. Volunteers are doing temporary repairs and offering to cook Christmas dinners. Woody's department store delivered nearly 200 blankets, and the US government has sent 500 army cots. And what do the homeless have to say about all this? This is Max Gunning, WXDC Evening News. There's no heat. What do you mean there's no heat? It's a holiday. They're booked solid. They said they'll be the first thing tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's too late. Yeah, boys, let me tell you, we've just ordered some due to all. My people are going to have it delivered within an hour. Oh, thanks, Oliver. That's We're going to be warm. You bet. Thanks again. Now, tell me, what are we going to do about all these holes from the air conditioning? We'll staple them up with everything we got. Plastic bags, cardboard boxes. We got 30 more rooms to go. You got enough volunteers? Yeah. Good deal. Keep it up. All right, all the clothes go over here. If you got any food, it goes downstairs. And thanks. Thanks very much, all of you. Mitch. Thank you. Would you stop acting like such a little general and relax? I am relaxed. What's this? It's a piece of holly. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Come and help me hang some music. Okay. Susan! Hey, thanks for coming. I want to give you something for your new shelter, Mitch. Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you. Merry Christmas to you. God bless. People are good. They'll respond once they know there's a problem. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> hey, look at there. Cracked crab and caviar. <laughs> the Arabian Embassy sent that over. <laughs> and you see that old lady over there? That's Muriel. She was a beautician most of her life. They look real pretty. They have to look pretty, you know. It's Christmas. If you treat people like people, they'll act like people. Boy, I wish this place were permanent, you know. This is what we hope to accomplish with a real shelter. Hey, come on, meet some of these folks. What you ask them? No, we do that. Gloria? Merry Christmas. Say hello to Mrs. Baker. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. 
I closed up the stove and you said it'd be safe to have a Now what you gonna do about it? Right. I closed up the stove. All right, I all our money. All right, right. Snyder. Hey, Snyder, I told you everything. before this building was not to be open until we had an inspection. And what's that gonna prove? It's a damn fire trap and everybody knows it. I don't have the money to fix it up and I don't know where I'm gonna get the money. What's the problem from there? That's that pipe I was telling you about. That's what's left of the second floor toilet. See what I mean? I am having a very bad day, and I'm not going to spend any more of it fighting with you guys. If you want to move us out, fine, but if you do, I'm moving 700 homeless people onto your front lawn. That's not a threat, it's a promise. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go fix the toilet. Hey, man, my old lady is you pregnant. Uh, i got to get a plate for Yeah, I'll talk to you about Hey, Mitch, listen, we've got to get a ramp outside. I can't get this wheelchair up them steps without help. Where are we gonna go on April 1st, Hero? We gotta be out of here by April 1st, right? Yeah. Hey, Mitch, look, I can't fix this pipe. We're gonna have to get the phone. Look, give me a minute to be alone, okay, guys? Happened at Christmas. You can't throw 700 people out on the street. You just can't do it. April 1st. You knew you had to be out of that shelter by April 1st. Yes, and I appreciate the extension very much. Believe me, I do. But let's get something straight. It is not a shelter. It's a holding tank. And besides, even the Constitution has amendments. Look, if you take that building away from them, they'll have no place else to go. How do we get into this mess? Don't you think I'm asking myself that? You have no idea how bad it is down here. We are so short of staff and so exhausted that half the time we're walking around like zombies. There are three toilets for 700 people. But still, it is all they have, and I can't take it away from them. I won't. Well, if you don't, you will wreck whatever little credibility we are gaining with the government. Mitch, you're not the Lone Ranger. We're trying to help people all across this country. What about them? What about them? The capital of the United States should be an example for the rest of the country. What about the $8 million the DOD got? Why can't that money be used to fix up the building, make it a model shelter? Because A, the DOD spent the money rehabilitating military installations, and B, they spent homeless people's money on military installations? Not so fast. They rehabilitated those barracks for the homeless. But that's not the point. The point is that you and your people have to get out. How does this sound? Initiative. That the city be required to provide shelter that is accessible, safe, and sanitary, and has an atmosphere of reasonable dignity. Sounds great. Good. We got to get it on the ballot and get the voters behind it. We'll kick the whole thing off with a march to protest the closing of the shelter and to launch the initiative. With the presidential election in November? That's going to be tough. The press will be more interested in interest rates in the arms race than food and shelter for the homeless. Yeah, you're probably right. Remind me to call the president and ask him to reschedule the election. <laughs> I'm gonna go on a fast. No. Yeah. It's the only way. If I don't go on a fast, nobody will pay any attention to the initiative or the shelter. We've got to get these people a decent place to live. You don't fight battles on two fronts. You're fighting on about eight. The initiative will take a lot of work. You'll need your strength. If it passes, you won't need to fast. If it doesn't, you can kill yourself next year. I don't expect you to understand. And I don't even expect you to believe it's right. But I cannot not do this, and I cannot make another cross. And I cannot carry another one. Not yours. I will not stay here and watch you commit slow suicide. And what about the congressional hearings? You insensitive, manipulative bastard! You promised. You said you'd help. <sighs> All right. I said I help and I will. I'll stay till after the congressional hearings. In the meantime, I suggest you and that ego of yours have a heart-to-heart -heart with God. 
I thought the idea was saving lives, not taking them. First, an accurate approximation of the issues. That's paramount. Next, if we can utilize the regional aspects and personnel, rather than placing the entire burden of responsibility on the federal government, the question is, who pays what share? The management, coordination, running of these programs, you know, in terms of the cost of these programs, should be a shared cost. How long have we been here? Too long. And I think the, four hours. Uh, I believe the federal government ought to do more. And now I wish to acknowledge the significant contribution made by a number of individuals, both in subcommittee and in the administration. I understand the state Excuse me, Senator. Of... Ladies and gentlemen of the press, these people come last 365 days a year. I think it's the ultimate insult that they should come last today. If you want to hear about homelessness, come out in the hall. We'll give you an earful. Uh, now, just a minute. Things have run a little longer than expected, but I guess we can hear from your folks now. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. The chair calls Muriel. All right, Don. Let me tell you something, Mr. Big Wig Senator. <laughs> There's nothing worse than being old and ugly, except to be old and ugly and homeless. You think it's funny not to have a place to lay your head at night, especially in the cold, or to have food to put in your stomach when you're hungry, or medicine when you are ill? I don't burn here. I come here from the West Indies, but I'm a naturalized citizen, and I work hard all my life. I don't deserve this. You too, someday maybe all, we have to take care of our old people. We still have something to give. Don't take us and throw us away like a dirty dish fan, because you may be throwing away yourself. Thank you. I got shot up in Nam, and they misfiled my papers so I don't get my disability. I had to leave my wife and my kids or they wouldn't qualify for welfare. I can't find a job. We all got the same story. Three or four solid slugs to the gut and it knocks you in the street. And then you're so busy surviving that you don't get a chance to get on your feet. The chair calls Mitch Snyder from the Community for Creative Nonviolence. These are the cremated remains of a human being, a man known only as John Doe, who froze to death on the streets, homeless and alone. Let the ashes and bones of this dead man provide the framework for all I have to say here. Something must be done. 
In the words of Father Daniel Berrigan, such deaths are criminal, a capital punishment inflicted on the helpless and innocent. People must cry out! Lives must be saved. It's as simple as that. Imagine, if you can, several million refugees moving slowly across this land. A ragged, retreating army of men, women, and children, all wounded to some degree in body and spirit, searching endlessly for all the prerequisites and necessities of life, food, clothing, shelter, and work. These are this nation's untouchables, America's disposable surplus, the destitute homeless on a forced march to nowhere. Far away in another part of America, the cry is heard, they're there by choice. They could get jobs if they wanted to. And what about the moochers and welfare cheats living off the fat of the land? Ladies and gentlemen, the fat of this land has become a garbage can. How can people living on the streets be on welfare? You've got to have a fixed address to qualify. And all the homeless are employed. It's a full-time job trying to find a meal and a place to sleep. Why then are they there? And why are their numbers increasing so rapidly? There may very well, of course, be as many reasons as there are homeless, but chief among them is an increasingly conservative mood in this country coupled with deep corresponding cuts in social spending. There is the deinstitutionalization of our nation's mental health system. There is unemployment, inflation, recession. There is the breakdown of traditional social structures, family relationships, and responsibility. There is the shortage of affordable housing. The list goes on and on. And God only knows how many old people have been gypped out of their pensions or urban renewal out of their homes or how much bureaucratic red tape has wrapped people in the mummies. But the homeless have no political power. They rarely vote or consume. They're not organized. Statistically speaking, they hardly exist. The fact is homelessness is un-American. It goes against our grain. By and large, the homeless are thought of as a bunch of losers because the basic fabric of this country continues to say anyone can win anything. And perhaps the final blow is we think because we pay taxes, we're absolved from any responsibility. Well, obviously, something is very, very wrong. And what is wrong is the destitute homeless are missing persons absent from our consciousness, from our deliberations, from our daily lives. We have placed a wall between ourselves and those that have no place to lay their heads, and that wall must come down. The homeless demand shelter, not excuses. They demand dignity, not the demeaning that comes from sleeping on sidewalks and heating grates. They demand that here and now, in the wealthiest nation on the face of the earth, basic shelter be recognized as an absolute and basic human right. If a major earthquake struck this country and several million people were instantly made homeless, we know that the great compassion of the American people would mobilize to provide food, clothing, shelter, and comfort to all in need. Well, damn it, this is a major earthquake. We have come here to educate, to incite, to plead, to do anything in our power, to encourage you to do everything in your power, to rid this nation now and for all time of this horrible human tragedy. And if you act intelligently, if you act compassionately, if you act quickly, you can make a very great difference. That is the expectation and the hope. That is the prayer that we lay before you at the tomb of the unknown homeless. Thank you. Stay and watch you commit slow suicide. In the meantime, I suggest you and that ego of yours have a heart to heart with God. I thought the idea was saving lives, not taking them. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. I hear you, Lord. I'm scared. I really don't want to do this.
bitch. You got your extension. They're not moving us out. Now that they're letting us stay in the shelter. Are they gonna fix it up? No, but well, we've gotten some calls from several of the churches, and now with the work on the initiative. Hmm. Mitch, you've got to eat. It's been 42 days. No. No more patchwork. No more races against winter. All I want to see is a place where people can live like people. A decent shelter. That's all I ask. I won't watch them say the last rites. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So lead me, Lord. Prepare us a table before me. Table 10 commandments. Read all about it in the reading room. We'd like your support. Got bottled water and a water cooler. You're leaving. Hey, lighten up, Harold. No, I will not lighten up. Mitch is my friend, too. Do you really think you're the only one in this house who cares about him? Nobody will pay any attention to us unless Mitch goes further than his last fast. Look, the whole idea is that once the initiative passes... He'll be dead by then. He almost died the last time, and that was 40 days. It'll be 52 by the election. That's not our fault. Carol, it is Mitch's choice. Diane. Mr. Bishop, look, we don't have much time. If we don't do something, Miss Snyder will be dead in two days. Now, I am begging you, if you could just... I'd like to, really, but my hands are tied.
Hi. How are you doing? I'm okay. Except I'm gonna sue my Barbie doll. Oh. Growing up, life didn't turn out to be as I expected. Who's here? Hi. Look what I brought. Lunch. Hi. Don't keep this up. Mm. 48 days is long enough. Come on, buddy, we need you. It's in God's hands now. Pray for him. Say Mitch isn't going to make it through the night. I don't want to be here. I want to be over at Euclid House. I want to be close to Mitch. Come on. I'll push you over. Uh, this weather says you got shelter duty. One night the shelter's going to have to take care of itself. Let's go. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But thou art with me. Hello. Department of Health and Human Services. They've been getting calls and telegrams. The negotiations are over. They promised to fix up the shelter, to make it a model. They want to know what it'll take to get Mitch to eat a cheeseburger. <laughs> Tell him he's a vegetarian. Young okay. lady, you better call the ambulance right now. The other shelter is not too far away. So damn cold. But we're gonna make it. Oh, forget it. We'll, we'll never get the wheelchair up those steps. <laughs> there. No. You. No, you're the engine. You're the one who needs the fuel. Here. Go on. So we can get across the park. Maybe. Maybe we can hail a car or a cop or something. Here, here, here. Let me, I'll pour it. Get out, please. Get out. 
him who keeps it on us. Keep it on Mitch. Bring him down back into our mists. Thy rod and thy staff separate the wheat from the chaff. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Girl. Carol, how are you, hon? I'm okay. How are you? Surprise, surprise. I'm still alive. <laughs> no cartwheels, okay? That heart monitor's a little shaky. How are we doing on the initiative? We're winning in every precinct. Oh, good. Well, you've come a long way since you're just some guy hustling couches. What are you doing here? I work here, remember? Look what I found down in maternity. Oh, beautiful. Is it a girl or a boy? Oh, boy. This is nothing. We got a whole vigil downstairs. Every hobo, every looney tune. Every friend I got in Washington sitting out front praying. Uh. Hey, guess what? Billy got a job. And just as soon as we save first and last month's rent, we'll... I better scram. Anyway, on the message committee, and we want you to know we love you. Thank you. Kathleen. Tell Mitch the baby's name. Mitchell Sam. Sam. That's short for Samaritan. Sorry about Jesse. What? I thought we love you, Mitch. Carol. What happened to Jesse? Last night, um, Jesse and Tom were heading over to Euclid House, and Jesse didn't make it. Jesse froze to death. into the shelter. Well, ignoring the war, he did the same thing. He ran out in front of the Germans and he'd bring those wounded guys back. He was a hero, Mitch. He won the Bronze Star. Ready, aim, fire! Ready, 
Aim. Fire. Ready. Aim. Fire. Ready. Three, Z. Halt. Order, Hans. Parade, rest. Listen, son. It's good to look close. It is also good to look far. For when you look far, you will see that this graveyard also meets with the sky. It's my privilege to present you with this flag. May it serve as a symbol and a constant reminder of our nation's gratitude for the service rendered our country and our flag by your father. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. You got any comments, anything to say? Well, just one thing, really. The next time you see a homeless person on the street, don't just pass them by. Stop and say hello, ask them how they are, how they're doing. If you can, offer to go and get them some hot to drink, something to eat. And if you can't do that, then just look that person right in the eye and tell them that you care. Because really, you're only looking in a mirror. Thank you. <laughs>